Today we're going to be talking about an advanced method to fix shadows on portraits in Photoshop where we really break down the hue, saturation and lightness. Now, I already do have a video on fixing up shadows really, really quickly. Check out the video right here. This is a quick fix. It takes a couple of seconds, maybe a couple of minutes depending upon your speed. But it's worth a try. And if that doesn't work out for you, this is the video that you need to jump back to. And even if that does work out, I recommend you watching this video because we're really going to break down the elements of shadow and even though this is advanced this takes a lot of patience and work this is a lot of fun to do so without any further ado let's get started So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this photo and follow along, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. Now, let's have a look at the shadows. Let's zoom in quite a bit. And around her eyes, you see there are a couple of shadows which we want to remove. Now, let's wait for a second and let's understand what shadows actually are. Now, whenever there is light, okay, whenever there is light, there is a part of the face or part of anything that doesn't receive light as much. That area goes dark and that is what we call shadows. Now, whenever we have shadows, a couple of things happen. Number one, the brightness changes. This area is bright and this goes dark because the light is over there. But is it just that? No, there's a lot more. If only that was so simple, we would have just brightened it up and it would be fine. No. When there is a shadow, the saturation also changes. Okay? The saturation changes. And most of the time, the saturation decreases. And whenever there is a shadow, the hue also might change. Now, some of you might ask, what is hue and saturation? Well, hue is what color? Saturation is how much color? So, whenever there is a shadow, the saturation changes, which means maybe the amount of color decreases. Whenever there is a shadow, hue changes, which means the color changes. The core color, that changes. Sometimes, not all the time. So in this example, first of all, we need to take care of hue, saturation and lightness one by one together. So first, we need to take care of lightness. To just see lightness and not get distracted by the colors, we're going to create a check layer. Okay? We're going to create a lot of check layers in this tutorial. All right? So create a hue saturation adjustment layer and take the saturation all the way to minus 100. What you can also do, you can create a channel mixer as well. So click on the adjustment layer icon and choose channel mixer. And you can just check on monochrome. That's also something which you can do. So two ways of creating the same check layer. So sometimes I prefer the channel mixer. I'll just go ahead and delete that. And you can name this, okay, luminosity check. It checks the luminosity, which means the brightness level. See, there's no distraction of color right now. Select the background layer and then create a curves adjustment layer. So click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Create a point in the middle and take it up just a little bit, just like this. Now, invert the mask, simple, control or command I. Make sure the mask is selected and then press control or command I. Okay. Now what we have to do, simple as you have guessed, take the brush make sure the foreground color is white and then flow is something that you need to decrease very low i usually go for one percent okay hit enter then zoom in and slowly paint back in the lights in the shadows okay very simple just zoom in and this takes a lot of work you really need to zoom in and fill back in the shadows just like that so just slowly and gradually have a little patience See, how are we matching shadows with that of the highlights? You have to go slow. And that's why we decrease the flow. We don't want to go all in all at once. Slowly and gradually. And you shouldn't do something like this. So we are going from right to left slowly. You shouldn't do something like, okay, that area is fine. Now I'll paint this area. Now I'll paint this area. That will lead to irregularities. You shouldn't do anything like that. And area-wise do it. For example, now we are dealing with the area under the eyes. For a different area, please create a different curves adjustment layer so that if we need to change the brightness, we can do that for different areas individually. Okay? So there we go. Time to time, zoom out and look how it looks. So before, after. 
it's it's done a pretty good job but there are a couple of places left so if you hold the alt or option click on the mask let's have a look at the mask it's not so regular so we'll just fill in the areas that we need to slowly and gradually look and that's why I asked you not to go randomly suppose you paint there and there it will create irregularities so go slow and gradual once you think this is fine hold the alter option again and click on the mask now let's have a look at this it's pretty good now we need to brighten up a couple of more areas but have a look at zoom out and quite have a look and there are a couple of areas which is looking white so we'll take the brush and this time change the color from white to black and we'll erase those areas always zoom out and have a look at those areas again so there are a couple of areas right in there which needs a little bit of correction okay now this is a thing which takes a lot of patience okay so you have to have a little patience and a little enthusiasm to work on this. I really enjoy doing this. I don't know about you, but I enjoy doing s stuff like this. Really work on things like this. Okay. So. Now when you're done doing this, now have a look at this. There's the edge glow that we'll create because we are exceeding the shadows. So then you have to again change the color of the brush from white to black and paint out the extra areas. Now this is tedious. I gotta tell you, I warned you up front, this is tedious, but this is fun to work with. Okay. So there you go. There we have really merged out the highlighted area like that. Okay, now have a look at the before and after. Don't worry about the line so much. We'll take care of that later. So before, after, before, after really looks good. So this is the area that needs work. So time to time, check the before and after. Okay, before, after. It looks fine. This area needs work a little. Before, after, there's, is there so many other, other area which needs work? No, I didn't, I don't think so. It's fine. It, look, it looks great. Now have a look at the before and after, before, after. Now, there are a couple of places which might need improvement. If I just go ahead and turn off the luminosity check, see, before, after. We have brightened up this area, but the saturation doesn't look right. So, what do we do? Create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And now if you change the saturation, have a look, it affects the whole image. We don't want that to happen. We just want it to affect the curves adjustment layer. So, how do we do it? Hold the Alt or Option. Click on the line between them to create a clipping mask. Okay, just like this. It will show an arrow which means that it is affecting just this layer. Another way of creating a clipping mask is this. Let's go back and if we just press this button, it also creates a clipping mask. So there we go. Now let's increase the saturation and let's see whether the hue looks right or not. Okay. Have a look. Now the saturation looks like something. By the way, how to check saturation? Well, there's a way to check saturation and it is by creating some saturation check layers. So all you have to do, create an adjustment layer and this time solid color adjustment layer. Create any saturated solid color, for example, red and then hit OK. Make two copies of the same. Okay. You made the two copies by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Change the blend mode of one to luminosity change the blend mode of other to hue and that way you see just the saturation always remember these three form a group hue luminosity and saturation in other words hue saturation and luminosity so when you have the blend modes of two you see the third so this one is at hue and this one is at luminosity so you see just the saturation now let's make a group of both of these also let's go ahead and create one more adjustment layer called curves which really will allow us to see it because we cannot see it much right now okay just like this and make a group of all of these three control or command g and name this saturation check okay so we have luminosity check we have saturation check now control the hue saturation of this one let's click on the icon to really go ahead and control this now have a look at this this is falling out of place okay the more the red the more the saturation in that particular area the less the red the lesser the saturation so we'll just go ahead and increase it it's matching over there 13 is matching if you go overboard it's showing up it's too much saturation so I guess 13 was a good number to be at probably 14 and there we go now we need to paint a couple more areas right in here so what we'll do we'll just go back to the curves and probably paint right in here with white make sure the flow is at one percent 
Okay, there we go. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, just like that. It's looking fine. Now let's turn off the check layer and have a look. It looks much more natural. Now have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. We really went ahead and took care of that. Now let's get back to curves and let's decrease the brightness just a little bit because it's too much, too heavy handed. There we go, just like that, okay? Similarly, we're gonna remove the shadows from these particular areas. Let's come back to saturation and probably I'll go ahead and increase the saturation even a little more like that. Now, for this area, let's create another curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves and let's increase it a bit, just like the previous one. Control R, Command I, take the brush, you know what to do, okay? Just paint on this area, try to match it. If you want no color distractions again, turn on the luminosity check. It really helps. Just like that. You don't want to completely match it because then it will start looking strange. It will look flat. So that's fine. Have a look at the before and after. So before, after we really took care of that, a little bit of correction needed over there. Now it's time for us to take care of the saturation. Let's turn off the luminosity check. Now let's see how the saturation is. To do that, turn on saturation check and have a look. Probably create an adjustment layer. Hue saturation, similarly create a clipping mask by clicking on this button and control the saturation. A little bit, now it's falling into place. Now have a look, before, after. It is a difference. Now you can also go ahead and try changing the hue. Again, there's a check layer for hue as well. How to create a check layer for hue? Simple, create an adjustment layer and this time solid color adjustment layer. Choose 50% gray. 808080 is the hex code. Just dial it in right there or RGNB all at 128. Click OK and change the blend mode of this one from normal to luminosity. Now all you see is just color, just color. If you cannot see it again, create a curves adjustment layer and really create an S curve, something like this, if you cannot see it. But I guess you can, I just hope you can see it. And before, after, you can just really see what's going on over there. And then you can just group and name that probably hue check. Okay, so you can just group all of these three and create another group and name these check layers. And now there are tons of actions which you can find on Google for free, which can create check layers for you in a click of a button. Okay, so you can create an action for this very simple. All right, now let's turn on hue check and let's get back to hue saturation of this layer. Now try changing the hue. Now it's falling out of place, doesn't, isn't looking right. If I try to change it, it becomes green. This is the right way. Zero was right, I guess. Probably a little bit to the right, just one or two, something like that. Okay, now let's have a look, turn off the hue. It looks pretty fine. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. Similarly, you can create one more curves adjustment layer and take care of this shadow. So let's go ahead and create that really, really quickly. We'll do that curves adjustment layer. Take it up just like this and control or command I make sure the mask is selected. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white. Now let's go ahead and paint this. And once you do it, I already have a ready image so that you don't have to wait throughout the procedure. I'll just open up the ready image. Our image is ready and this is something which I did yesterday. Now, if we have a look, let me show you. So let me turn it off. This is the before, this is the after. We took care of that. Now let's turn on the check layers and let's see if anything is falling out of place. So luminosity check, it's fine, it's pretty good. Saturation check, there is a little bit of discrepancy over there, but that can be cloned out, that's fine. It's outside the shadow area. Hue check, the same area, that's fine, okay. Most of the areas over there here are fine. Let's, okay, that's fine. Now, once you're satisfied with this, once you're confident about it, all you have to do, collapse the layer, create a new layer. Now, we're gonna do some cloning and sampling and all that stuff to match these edges, okay? So, take the regular healing brush tool, okay? And then, make sure all layers is checked, blend mode is normal. Take a sample from this area and try to match this area with this area. By the way, I actually went ahead and decreased the opacity. This was not looking natural. So I decreased the opacity of that one and just try to match it. 
just like that. And there you go, it's matched. It's fine. Try to match similarly this area with that area. That should work fine. It worked fine. Take the bigger brush. Try to match it. It should work fine. And similarly with this area, there's a shadow over there. We can take care of that by cloning. Fine. You really need not be so much careful with this because at the end of the day, we're going to decrease the opacity anyway. So, so this area was creating a lot of problems. So we can just simply clone that out and clone out the edges. And there you go. Let's zoom out and have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. And after you're done with this, okay, I'm going to show you my final result because this is something which we did really, really quickly. So this is something which we did. All right. Now let's make a group of both of these, not the check layers group of both of these layer one and this group. You can also name this group remove shadows and you can name this probably sampling. Okay. And this is just for identification purposes. Now have a look. All these areas are, are on its separate layer. So it's, it's great. If you're not satisfied with any of this, you can also go ahead and erase these areas and redo that again. Let's turn on these areas. Now let's create a group of both of these. And then you can decrease the opacity of these. Okay. To probably something like 79 or probably 75 or 80 ish. And that would be perfect like that. Now have a look at the before and after really, really makes a difference. So this is the before and this is the after. Let me show you my final result and there it is. So there you go. That's how to fix shadows from portraits in Photoshop. I hope you liked it. Just a quick little recap. Nature's law, whenever there's a light, there will be a shadow. So whenever there is a shadow, three things change. What are those? Number one, lightness. Very obvious. So if an area is getting dark due to a shadow, lightness is obviously going to change. It's going dark, so lightness decreases. <laughs> Number two, saturation. What is saturation? How much color? Not what color. Saturation means how much color. So color probably might decrease or increase depending upon other sources of light or reflections, etc. or maybe even the surface. So saturation changes and another thing that is hue. Hue might also change slightly depending upon a lot of other factors. So how to fix shadows? Very simple. First of all, we take care of lightness which changes majorly. So create a curves adjustment layer, brighten it all up and mask in these areas. Just fill in these areas. That way we took care of the lightness. Then we create hue saturation adjustment layer, clip it to that curves and then take care of hue and saturation. And that's how to go about it. I hope this video helped you. I hope this video made sense to you. And if it did, make sure you give us a like and don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for making this episode possible and making Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.